say even my son, there are lots of people, lots of aunts and uncles and mommies and daddies who have young sons and young daughters who want to know what your journey was, you know? So let's just take a step back, all right? Let's yeah, talk no. about maybe even the, the high school, the high school, Michael. Who sure. were you in high school and how did you even realize that, hmm, I have something. I really have something. Right. Well, in high school, Welcome to another Mobile Reasoning. Today we have the pleasure of talking with Michael Sean Harris. Michael is known as a singer. He's known as an actor. He's known as an author. He's known as a vocal coach. He is also known as a lecturer, among many other things. Well, today we will be sitting back and talking with Michael and just to peel some of the layers of who this wonderful son of the soil, this Jamaican man is. So stay with us and let us reason with Michael. Hello. Michael Sean Harris. Michael, you know, when I looked, when I started looking up for, for things about you, I became breathless. <laughs> I'm serious, you know, when I look at all the different places, all the footsteps that I see of you, you should be somebody <laughs> like in your 70s or your 80s or your whatever. <laughs> you have done and continue to do so much, you know? You know, I would tend to think we don't do enough yet. So every time it's like, yeah, I haven't done all these things. I guess we don't look back and think, think, you know, oh, I've done, you know, you're just trying to look towards the next thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we spoke um, we spoke a little earlier um, in Clubhouse and right. I spoke about the first time that I encountered you, which was on my television screen um, with Ashe. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know that you were with Kathy Levy and the little, the little people. Yeah, so make a journey back a little because right. you know, you know what, what is happening though, Michael? There are lots of people, let me just say, even my son, there are lots of people, lots of aunts and uncles and mommies and daddies who have young sons and young daughters who want to know what your journey was, you know? So let's just take a step back, all right? Let's yeah, talk about maybe even the, the high school, the high school, Michael. Who sure. were you in high school and how did you even realize that, hmm, I have something. I really have something. Right. Well, in high school... I don't know. I think I was weird in high school. I think I was, you know, I think I was a, a, a nerd, but um, but possibly maybe a, a kind of popular nerd. I don't know. I don't, I, I not, you know, because I, I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't feel downtrodden. <laughs> which is a plus. Yeah, yeah, which is a plus. But, you know, it's, you still kind of feel um, because you're, you're the things that you do and the things that you're interested in are, are not the norm. You know, you're not you're not the, the sports person necessarily. Um, and you know, I was in, I was on the choir, you know, I was, I was doing art all the time, you That's know, That's the nerdy thing to do. Yeah. It's not the cool right. thing to do. Right. Exactly. Yes. Um, so, so, you know, I, when I had a, a free moment, I was in the art room, actually, I was either painting or drawing or, uh, you know, we were rehearsing for something and eventually also doing drama or, you, you know, doing acting and stuff as well, debating <laughs> that kind of stuff at, at school. But, um, you know, always even helping out like with the, the school's challenge quiz or just being around them, you know, doing photography. Club. I remember, I remember Marlon James, actually, you, you know, you know, I know. Yes. Right. yes. So when he was at Wilma, because it was Wilma's, you know, when we were at Wilma's, I remember being in like in first and second form or something. And he was like maybe a prefect and, um, you know, we'd share comics as well. I needed art as well, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I don't think then we, I knew that, he, you know, this was this was who he'd become, but we never do, and um, you know. So, but yeah, th that was that was me at Wilma's. At some point, I think even at, in sixth form, um, because we, were, we we loved the choir, and the the person who was doing the choir had left, uh, Mr. Brian, um, Lloyd mm -hmm. Brian, had left and gone to. I think it was, I think it might have been JC or or um, Calabar. The other school. Yeah, one of one of the other schools. One of the schools. <laughs> <laughs> one of the not Olmos schools. And um so I took it on myself to 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 do the choir. And I never mean, know, you know, I, mean, I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew what, what sounded good. <laughs> you know, I did. I think I might have made some people cry too, and which was unfortunate. But you know, sometimes you 
yeah, you, you get some bad bad examples, and you and you you get, go to extremes. I mean, I apologize to, to whoever those people were. Um, but but uh, yeah, that was that was that was me at, at, at Woolmers. Um, always trying to, always not trying, but always being creative. I think I even started trying to write songs and stuff from I was while at, from you were in high school. I was high school. Um, I got a keyboard, one of these keyboards that you could program stuff you could you could sequence you know you could put a, a drum beat and a bass line and stuff yes and um and even though i had started going to piano lessons when i was in prep school i stopped um because it was getting in the way of my cartoons so i had stopped but my, my sisters <laughs> continued but i got this keyboard and and i remember the summer i got it I was just writing all these songs. My, I mean, again, my sisters, my older sisters, was like, yeah, they, they sound a little depressing, or you know, they, that's a really weird song. That was the feedback I'd get from them. But I was still learning with your nerd, with your nerdy self. With my nerdy self, so I was writing lyrics and coming up with with melodies. I had a a, a, a dual tape recorder, so I'd I'd record the 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 instrumental I made and then sing a vocal on it and then run it back and sing a harmony and then run it back and sing another harmony. I mean, by the time it was finished, it was completely in another, another key. But I was I was somehow learning some 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 skills and some and and honing some talents there as well you know in terms of that technical stuff because that that eventually what I went to college and did <laughs> so. yeah so so Michael you know what I'm getting from you so far is that it is very important to if this is your interest even for high school it's very important that you make it into the right high school isn't it. True, true. Yeah, because, I, I would, if you don't have anything, because Woolmers, Woolmers fostered all of those um, yes. aspirations. And, and, and we had some, I, I have to say, we had some really good teachers, you know, we had some not so good ones, but we had some extremely good ones. Yeah, and some some who were who were who had enough foresight to say, okay, you know, I can see where this person is heading, what they're good at. Let's, let's even if it's not in the curriculum, let's, let's do, you know, do something with the extra curricular thing where where you can you can um you know help reinforce what that person is good at or what they're what they're doing or you know mm -hmm. so so i was really fortunate with some of the teachers that i had and some of them were really smart i think um just in terms of guiding you in how to think you know mm -hmm. <laughs> how to mm -hmm. how to reason and so uh, yeah some I, I was really fortunate what about your community you mentioned the teachers supporting but what about your community let's see parents family were, right. was, so, was that a part of your support system? I, I would say so, um, because, you know, we had a piano at home. Um, and again, fortunate, my parents sent us, if we wanted to, sent us to, 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 to music lessons. So like we'd come home and then we'd go and, and you know, all the, the music teacher that, that we had in the beginning was um, near in our neighborhood, actually. So we could I, either walk or, we, you know, we'd get a lift down. And we'd all go to, to music lessons either during the week or sometimes on Saturday. Um, and I, as I told you, you know, unfortunately, I was not the disciplined one. My sisters <laughs> did more than I did, um, even though they didn't do music in the end. But um, yeah, I kind of dropped <laughs> dropped out and <laughs> just did my own thing. I was composed of my own things. Um, but also, you know, we'd, we'd read a lot. Like my parents, my father, actually my whole family kind of loves Stephen King and a few others. My father always read. He always Wicked, had that Stephen King rocks. Yeah, yeah. So, so me at so when we were at home in the summer, sometimes we'd we'd have paint, we'd have cartridge paper and all kind of stuff. I'd be painting. I, I think I still have a folder with all these paintings I did. Um, sometimes we'd we'd you know we had you remember encyclopedias. We had those things as oh, well. Oh yes, like, yes, man, the Britannicas lined right. off on the wall. So I remember rainy days. Even I think I remember even this even before I went to school at all. I mean, with my with my brother and my sisters rainy days being together with the encyclopedias open and paper out and we'd be drawing pictures from the encyclopedias and that kind of stuff and so we did that we did that we'd read uh i remember some as well said okay these are the stephen king books i'm reading for this summer it and it took a while because it was huge and uh, <laughs> you know and uh you know i remember doing doing stuff like that so yeah for sure um and and then if, even if we want to do some other stuff, like I know my sisters, like one of my, one of my older sisters, she she was an athlete. She did hockey and and she ran, and um, another one did swimming and you know tennis and you know. So there is, yeah. I guess we we're fortunate. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Even that is creative as well. Yeah. Even that yeah. as a creative expression. And so you you did this through high school. Did you ever um, did you ever compete with um into the JCDC competitions? Was that a stream for you as well? 
So no, I, I never really entered that. The only the closest thing we did to that was my last, I think the last year of high school. Um, a friend of ours, um, Livingston White, who is now a professor at UWE, he wrote a play um, when we were in high school called um, Not Just a Nightmare. And then I said, oh, it should be a musical. And then I wrote the songs for the musical. And, uh, you know, you know, so the, the little the thing I was doing a few years before with the keyboard, you know, came you know, yeah, I made the tracks and stuff. And we did we performed this in they had, a, they had an interschools uh, drama festival, drama. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, competition, like a drama festival. So we competed with that. One of the teachers directed it and, you know, we all made made our costumes and the set and everything. And we went there. We never win nothing. But <laughs> one of the judges was Kathy Levy. Okay. And so she saw all of us and she came backstage and she invited every single one of us. She said, I'd, you know, I know you didn't win, but I see what, you know, I'd like to invite every single one of you to come and join Little People. At that point, I didn't know what Little People was. I was like, who? John what? <laughs> so, so, but that Saturday I went to the meeting and I was like, I can't believe this exists and this is like a dream. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's where oh, it started. That's, that's beautiful. So you started there. Um, when, as, as I said, I look on, I look on, on your bio and, and I am busy. All right. <laughs> so you have gone on to be a vocal coach out of all of that. <laughs> um, you have been a lecturer at, of course, Edna Manley College yeah. of Music. Uh, we know of your face as one of the judges on All Together Sing. Yeah. Um, and you have gone on to be an author. Um, Did you sell Rising Star? You also had a guest appearance on that as well. Um, now you're assistant professor at Berkeley, which is uh, seemed to be a sweet spot as well, because you went yes. on and did your um, you've done your studies there. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that <my home? laughs> um, it is your home. It is yeah. your home. It's your, it's your home away from home. Mm -hmm. um, why did you because you've done so many things, you know, you've done so many artistic things. And one of the things I wanted to ask you, which you answered before is, have, do you draw? Do you paint? Oh. Well, you mentioned it. Yes, you do. Yeah, 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 but how sure. did you, how did you, um, why music? What was what, the sweet spot for you with music? I think once I was in Little People and Ashe and we were doing, performing a lot on stage, um, I think that's where it kind of came home to me. That kind of, uh, there's a, a feeling that comes over you when you're on stage and you're, and you're performing and you're, and you're doing it well. Um, and also you're getting a reaction from the audience. And and I think that is a, a part of it. It's just a, 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 a an expression that that I think if I don't do, I think part of me would be dead or something. You know, yeah, so it's something that I have to do. So um, music, I think, has wow. I mean, when I think about it, I guess you know our, the family again. We love music. Like my father was always playing music, all kinds of music, and my mother as well. My father loved country music and um, and and even some old. Um, pop like ABBA we grew up on ABBA and my aunt you know brought us up on the on the Beatles and then you know my father was with the you know Skeeter Davis and and Jim Reeves and and um Dolly Parton uh, you know and and that kind of stuff my mother did a lot of old Jamaican music but she loved Dolly Parton too and um and and um Kenny Rogers and lots of yeah lots of old like rock steady and stuff and, and you know and even before, you know, that kind of stuff my mother loved, loves. And um, my uncle, um, my aunt's husband, you know, he, he was a Bob Marley fan. He had every every album. And um, so, you know, we, we grew up on that, plus going to music, so with the classical music and stuff. If, uh, even after I'd left high school, I'd gone back to do piano and I also went to, to study viola and violin with Stephen Woodham. So, you know, we're doing, we're playing orchestra and stuff as well. So, you know, that, that it just, it, it, yeah, I, I, I don't even think about it, but that's just me. <laughs> you know, that's just part of my, my part of my thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, as, it's as natural as breathing for you. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Um, what, what would you have to say to, let's say, because you had a very um, enabling environment. Mm -hmm. for for your for your passion um even before you perhaps realized that it was a passion you always had an enabling environment um as you know our culture is filled with creatives yeah and um you know young children may not and their parents their 
their guardians may not even recognize it necessarily as creative expression, which you can earn from. Um, I mean, how do you address that? How, what, what would you say about um, mm -hmm. encouraging, um, feeding the arts within, within um, the younger person? Uh, first, I have to say that it, my endram was encouraging to a point because my, my parents, my father, my parents didn't want me to do music when I decided decided I wanted to go and study music. They was like, what? No, no, you know, why? Let's get serious now. Yeah, exactly. Even even while I was in Ashe, they was like, you're still gonna, you're gonna stay in Ashe. I remember I was at UE for a year and I, I hated it. I was I was doing natural sciences. Um, you know, I was supposed to be a doctor like my Ooh. sister. But um, yeah, I dropped out. <laughs> and, then I, and then I was performing for a while. And then I said, you know, because I also like art and I liked architecture and stuff, I, I'd applied to go and do architecture. And I got an interview, and at that time it was really competitive. So they they asked me to come in for an interview. I went in with the interview, and you know we had a nice talk. They liked the stuff that you know they're they're pretty much getting ready to say yes, welcome. Um, but they but before they did that, they said um yeah we'd like to invite you to come, but we see you on TV performing, and so you're gonna have to make a choice, either you know either the performing or architectural. Of course, I didn't really have to make any kind of choice. That, that was the dumbest thing I've, you know, I've ever heard. So I, so I made the choice. I was like, well, thank you so much. Goodbye. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be performing. <laughs> so <laughs> um, their loss, you know, they, they could have had a really creative. You have to tell me what happened when you went back home and you told your parents that you gave that up. Well, I mean, well, they were, they were there. <laughs> the, the, I mean, the, 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 the truth is, I mean, I'm I'm I have I've always been kind of strong-willed anyway. So even if they didn't want me to or didn't like it, I was gonna do it if I really wanted to do it, and I'd find a way. Uh, so um, and then when I eventually dropped out, and then a couple of years later, I, you know, got accepted to Berkeley, and then um, you know, Berkeley is not cheap; it's a private school, right? So and it's not cheap now, and <laughs> it wasn't cheap then. And um, but my father took out a loan, um, put the house as collateral to go out a loan to pay for the first couple of years or whatever. And I got scholarships and different things while I was there. So eventually they came around, it came around. But I think part of the, the thing for, for other people who are who are having, you know, this kind of experience, some of the, the issues with Jamaica is that um, we do look at the arts, even though it's in our face as this is what we are meant to do, you know, as a nation. Um, we look at the arts as a as a hobby or, and and some officially kind of look at it as a trade, you know, it's for somebody who, you know, for the sufferer, it's, it's, you know, for the, they get to YouTube, they have nothing else to make him, make him cut a tune kind of thing. Um, and that is part of the, probably part of the reason why it isn't as structured as it could be, because it isn't given the respect that it deserves. Um, and the, the, the truth is that the arts are for everyone, it's for the people who are in the ghetto, the people who are not, the people who are uptown, because they're artists. I mean, Jamaica just, just, just produces artists um whether you know singers or multi-faceted artists or, or painters sculptors um you, you know artistic scientists i mean there's scientists who are who are creating so many new things and they're being creative they're creatives you know and so i shouldn't just say artists jamaica produces creatives and in every field and i think we just need to to, to acknowledge that and and you know you look at it shine some kind of like a respectful light on it and 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 move forward in that way i think we, we that's why it's such a struggle because we're fighting with with ourselves um with it when it's steering us in the face and you know as, as plain as day that this this is you know what it should be it took a while when you're talking about the stem stem you know um yes. things and we kept going a lot of us going stem what about steam where where are the arts in this this is jamaica and you know and yes. and now it's still lip service and they're going so oh, steam but they don't really they don't still haven't really understood what that meant uh, you know so it's and it's just with the same with with edna man edna man is a place that has so much potential but but they you know it's like a, an animal that, they, that they've never seen before they, they, yes. in the ministries they don't know what it is and what to do with it they, you know so they try to say oh it's a teacher's college but it's not oh it's a te it's a training it should be putting out putting out um beanie man or something it's, it's, it's like, far more than that exactly i mean yes, yes it can put out another beanie man yes. but it can put out a lot of other things as well mm -hmm. um so you know and, and to sustain an industry an industry is not just made up of, of the people that you see on screen or on stage you know, there's all these other support things that are just as important as the art. You know, there's the lighting people, there's a, the, the producers, the managers, and the, the whatnots. And um, so, you know, when you when you don't really take the thing that 
that needs disrespect, yeah, you know, you don't give it as much respect as it could, then you, you, you're not going to, you know, fulfill it on the promise that it, that mm -hmm. it is, you know, cause mm -hmm. it, because it, it could really transform the, the country if it, if it was really respected. But you know, I, I, I am in total agreement with you. Um, I believe that we, we do, we do pay a lot of lip service to, to mm -hmm. this industry. This is multi-billion dollar industry that we have mm -hmm. here. Um, one of the things that, cause there was, you know, we're just ending reggae month, one whole month of celebrating yeah. reggae. But the thing that I, I, I particularly noticed was that it was not just focusing on reggae music, the industry, the entertainment industry as a whole was a part of the focus. And I think that was very deliberate. Um, one of the, the many points that came out during this time was talking about, um, artists, um, persons within the profession needing to know about the the business, the business of music, the business of the industry. Um, mm -hmm. I am not sure. Maybe you can speak to it because you are more um, integral in the in the community. Is that something that we focus on a lot? You believe in in building building out our industry, the business of it. I don't. I don't think it's it has it has as much focus as it should. I mean, I know at Edna Manor they have some courses, but you know, really it should be a degree. But but also, I mean, artists generally, I think, need to know about the business. You know, they don't have to be a lawyer, you know, they don't have to be, but they should they should know um, how it affects them and what their rights are, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I keep, I, I use this analogy all the time. Um, and it's not just about the business part of it. Like in, 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 in Italy, you know, you know, wherever the, the opera centers are, stuff, the people, the general public know a lot about opera. So when somebody comes up with a new opera, they go and, and, and watch a performance of a, an existing one, they can critique that thing and go, oh, this wasn't very good, or that performance wasn't good because it didn't, wasn't true to this, blah, 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 blah. We don't do that, right? So we, 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 we can't we can't talk um we can't talk intelligently about reggae or dance hall yes. we can't talk intelligently about about the um you know, about the industry or about trends or you know or or the fine points of a performance and, and that kind of thing and so and and that is true of the general public but it's also true of the of the the media yes. um and it's true of some of the actual performers as well so sometimes you see on these on these shows when you know a fad when somebody isn't really a performer or whatever but they you know they they they, they went viral mm -hmm. you know like you know the, the, the bus cannot cross it that kind of stuff you know and then there's oh oh and then somebody put a beat to it let yes. them oh, so let's let's get them on some fest yes. this, this person is not a performer so so of course they go on some fest and they tank you know because mm -hmm. that's not their thing that's not mm -hmm. So, but if you had any sense and you and, and you know, weren't just trying to make a, a buck off the latest fad, then you go, okay, this this is disrespectful to the other people who have been working hard, doing their craft, blah, 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 blah. Yes. You know, and um, this is a fad, let's recognize it for what it is and let's move on. You know, let it, let, let's enjoy what it is and then move on. But don't try and, and drag this out and, and make these people what they're not. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see it all the time. You see it on, on, on the little interview shows that happen on, on TV and you go, what is this? What am I listening to? <laughs> you know, yes, yes, going on yes, here? Have, yes. have you thought about why why are you putting this in? You know, um, as, as a meal in front of us, like we're supposed to, to to have this and be healthy after we've had it. No. Well, well, you definitely know a bit about the business behind music, the business about the industry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you definitely do, and um, I know that you have. Uh, an online course these days, Reggae Online, right. where you are using the opportunity of, of entreating and training within the industry. Talk to us about that. That's, that's sure. your late, is this your latest project, Michael? This is the one, latest of, one of your latest? One, one of the latest, yeah. All right. So, All right. So, and, and, you know, as, as the days go by, it's becoming more expansive, you know. It, but it takes a while and sometimes I don't even know where it's becoming yet, but then an idea comes, oh, this could be good too. So um, <laughs> Reggae Online started out as, you know, the, the idea is to have a suite of courses about reggae, dancehall and Jamaican culture generally. So not just music, but also um, cultural things, you know, the language, um, hopefully eventually food, dance, that kind of stuff, um, folk music. 
Uh, so what the first course that we had is a Komino drumming course and it's still there, it's up. And then the, the next course we had um, is reggae rudiments, which kind of breaks down the, the different reggae rhythms. Uh, and it's really meant for, that one is really meant for musicians. Um, and it talks about, you know, what the bass part plays for this rhythm, what the, what the, you know, what the drums play, you know, what the keyboard parts are, that kind of thing. And what the hits, the songs that have used that rhythm as their bass, you know, that have made that popular. Mm -hmm. um and so so that is that is online that is you know this is there anybody can register for that now um and and apart from the music things i i definitely want to have some some things that have to do with inspiration and spirituality that kind of thing a wellness um so there's a gratitude course that i did um called 30 days of gratitude which you know takes people to 30 days of expressing gratitude and different aspects of it so um so we have a, another few coming up um actually there's one called talking bob um which Fabian thomas is is going to be the the course our author author but we're, we're filming the last the last video for it actually t tonight um and it's talking about the life and career of bob marley um, I think it's about five or six lessons, mm -hmm. and um, and then there's another one uh, called Gord, the art of Gord banjo making. So the banjo, you know, some some of us may or may not know, but banjo is integral to mento mento yes. music, which is yes. folk form. And um, the precursor to the banjo was was um, something called the bansa, which was you know coming from Africa and also from plantations and stuff in the in the 1600s, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So. It was in Jamaica from before it became the banjo, um, and so so this course goes through making banjos um, with gourds and and you know um, I think I think he uses lignum vitae. I forget oh, what. Oh really? What, it's, it's Jamaica. So it is it is something that is actually still being made now, or or well, is it just well so so the the, the the course author for this is Jeff Menzies. Um, he's Canadian. He's I think his father's family might be um, Guyanese, but he's he lives in Jamaica. He's married to a Jamaican. He's been there for a while, and so he uses Jamaican goat skins as well for, um, for it. And the gourds, I think he's tried with calabash, which is you know in Jamaica, but they're, they're too thin. So he he's trying to grow gourds there, and sometimes he imports them. Mm -hmm. And I think he also tries with coconut um, to, to make the, the the body of the of the banjo. So he goes through. The process. I saw this is several videos for this one because it's a long process because you have to go through how to prepare the the gourd and um, how to clean it, all that kind of stuff. Measurements for the for the um the, the fretboard and all that kind of things, and then you know making it look good, fitting it together, tuning all that kind of stuff, making the pegs, wow. all of it. So mm -hmm. that's coming up by next week, I think, which should be done with all the videos, editing and stuff for that. Um, Fabian has a couple more courses coming up. <laughs> um, one about one is called uh, Jamaican language for beginners. So it's you know it's talking about part one, you know teaching them the, the basics of it, and another one Jamaican music a little look, which is uh, just a quick brief history of the, of Jamaican music. Um, Dr. Maria Hitchens uh, is she's working on a suite of dance hall dance courses, Lovely. and the first one is more like a history course on you know talking about the the key people and the eras and that kind of thing. So and that's called Bus um what's it called Bus the Dance. Oh. That's, the, that's that one. And and there's a few more that you have. There's about six of them that you have in the suite that you're going to work on. Um But Michael, these sound these sound like university courses, you know. I that's that's what I'd I'd love to have them, you know, to, to find some kind of alignment. If I, I I just don't know how to go about that yet. Um, yes. But to make that kind of connection. Mm -hmm. So but part of this now. What I, what I mean, because it's good to have these courses and you can do them on your own or you can, yes. but, but uh, there's another aspect that I added to it, which is kind of like a community um, experience. So when you, when you sign up for the course, you get added to an online community, it's like a private online community um, just for that course. And so you can interact with other people in the course. You can interact with the course instructor, the, the person who designed the course. Um, uh, we can even have lives, you know, every now and then, and, and, and they, they can, they can, you know, post their assignment there if they want, but it's just the people who are in the course can see the, who can see that. Um, and so the, the latest, <laughs> the latest thing with, 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 with that kind of online community, because I, I figured, okay, if there are people doing courses in, in, you know, how to create banjos or, you know, reggae rudiments, that kind of thing. And so there's also a general space where they can interact with each other, not just mm -hmm. their course. And so the, the newest thing, though, is to have two book clubs <laughs> that are going to be a part of that course. So one that have to do just with, you know, Jamaica. And, and we can expand the Caribbean authors and, and, and themes and, you know, subjects. And then another one for more, um, again, spiritual and inspirational stuff. So um, one book club, the, 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 the one with Jamaican authors and stuff is called Rockers. 
and then the other one is bookends. So we, um, so that's so hopefully, um, you know, all of those people can can mix and mingle and interact and grow and you know help each other out and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's still in you know it's still in the beginning stages. Um, every day I'm I'm either designing some kind of graphic thing to work to to go on the thing or uh, you know creating a paywall or or create you know drafting code of conduct or some something. So um, you know it, it's. It's fulfilling. I, tell, I said to my friends, you know, I'm. I'm. Sometimes you you, you get on this uh, like a you're on a wave of get it done, get it done, and so like your my mind is always buzzing, and then sometimes you take a break from the get it done. You're like I can't get started again. <laughs> and then, but once you do, you're back on that yes, wave. And you're, yes. You're done. So so every day, you know, there's a <laughs> there, there's but, more things done. But but isn't isn't the Kumina actually launched as yet? Because and yeah, there are parts of the courses that launched. are launched, yeah. right? Yeah, the Kumina drum, drumming is launched, the, the reggae rudiments is launched, and the um, 30 Days of Gratitude is launched. Actually, I'm, I'm going to try and do another another cohort of 30 Days of Gratitude during Lent, which just started. So um, we're going to try and do that. Um, and we're planning a launch for the whole thing um, in May. Yes. But I think we can, we can, we can launch um, Talking Bob um, in a week or two, and then definitely... Um, the gourd banjo making we can launch in a week or two just trying to find ways to market it to 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 get it to the right people the people who are interested in that kind of stuff you know it, there I, I i know that there are people outside of jamaica who are interested um it would be nice if somehow we could also find communities um within jamaica because there's there's jamaican you know there's the diaspora who, yes. who might want some of that information who might, who might grow up without knowing it and this is a good way to learn it but there's also people growing up in jamaica who don't have that information as well that's so true that is so true so um how can individuals who are interested get involved how can they get online okay so, and um, register for any of these courses okay so there's a there's a website um so it's, it's reggae it's www.reggae-on-line.com and once you go there, just um, sign up, you know, uh, you, you, you can create an account there. And um, if one of the courses that's there already, you can go on and you can you can enroll, you know, and the payment stuff is there. Um, if if the other courses that I mentioned aren't up as yet, you know, your name would be in a, in a list. So once they're, they're coming up, we'll, I'll send out, a, uh, a, you know, some kind of an email or a, or a, um, uh, what, you, what you call it, uh, like a newsletter. To okay. say you know, these are these are coming up, and um and then you can you can definitely find it online, uh, and and what I've done as well is with the there's a there's a link for the community space as well, so once you're once you're logged in you should be able to get on the community space at least, and um at least and if you're if you're not enrolled in one of those courses then those spaces will be locked for you but the general space will be will be open, and um yeah so even there you know. Once the, the courses go live, I'll I'll put a, a little action button that says enroll now, and you can it'll take you to the enrollment page. So so there is there is there is ongoing um, enrollment for the courses that are already yes. live, and people go yes. at their own pace. Exactly, exactly. That's a plus. Yeah. Um, is it a certification? What do they get at the you end? Get a little of certificate. The you get a certificate at the end. Yeah. Once you complete okay. it, uh, it it automatically generates a certificate and emails it to you. All right, great. I look forward to hearing you talking about the collaborations with the, with whether it is Edna or shopping it to the University of the West yeah. Indies, shopping it to, to Berkeley, shopping it to... So, I mean, Berkeley, I mean, some of the people at Berkeley have been very supportive as well, actually, because uh, even once I've been here, we did a webinar kind of exposing people to some of the things that are going on and... <laughs> Um, we're gonna have more conversation with with uh, another friend who's here, who's gonna help me to create some like some targeted ads and stuff um, for some of the courses. So you know, and if anybody knows stuff about that or about you know how to make those connections, email me. Uh, email you, know, you where? How can people contact so, you? So well, you can you can contact me either the personal email, which is a e l s e a n, which is the last three letters in Michael and then middle name Sean at gmail dot com or team at reggae-on-line.com. So. All right. And we're going to be making sure that we put that right there in the Thank screen so as so people yeah. can actually see it and reach out to yeah. you. No, man, we have to, su we have to support our Jamaican gem, you know. Uh, Anywhere you are in the world, yeah. anything that you're doing, we have to find ways to make sure that we can support you um, because it's a part of supporting us as well in sure. our own journey. So sure. 
what else? Um, I, I, I recall there is also a book that you have talking about mm -hmm. just um, um, Perform, the business right. of what you do. Well, um, so there's is also a book that you have for, for persons who want to even learn the, um, the business. Well, what, it's, about stage, it's really about stagecraft. So it's Mike's, um, Mike's, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of one book. <laughs> We're going to put it up there. Yeah, it's performance pointers. So, um, but it's, it's MP3. So it's Mike's something performance pointers. <laughs> pocket. There you go. Because it's a small book. Mike's Pocket Performance Pointers. So, um, yeah, it's on Amazon and um, Audible because it's an audiobook as well. Uh, and I'm actually using it as a text in one of my classes that I'm teaching as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's about stagecraft, about um, learning songs, about being on stage, that kind of thing. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Um, anything else that you're doing right now that you wanted to, you wanted everyone to know about, Mike? Well, one of my, one of my, this is an ongoing project as well. It's called Folk Beats and Blip Speak, which is, you know, it's tough to do with my, my love of Jamaican folk music. So I, I use uh, the folk music um, and I fuse it with electronic music or electronic textures and stuff. So, you know, every now and then I'm, <laughs> I, comp I do another composition or whatever, but there's a couple of them up on iTunes as well. Uh, you just look for Michael Sean Harris, and you'll you'll you know they, they should come up, and um and there'll be more. So yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, Michael, I want you to continue making waves and leaving your footprint everywhere you go. You know, Thank you. never stop, never stop. Um, there is so much in you, and um, I wish that I have a son who has a very keen interest in in art and just everything to do with all different manner of creative expression and there are so many persons who would want to even just be in your presence mm -hmm. to be able to learn from you and um and just to pull from your energy so i thank you so much for continuing to to carry the torch of jamaica and to carry the torch of our culture um mm -hmm. demonstrated in your music and in the way in in your teaching and um just making continue to make an impact the way that you have been because okay. It's a big deal. <laughs> you know, like KFC is a big deal. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you so much for sitting down with us and just yeah. and just having this this reasoning. My pleasure. All right. Walk yeah. good. One love. Thank you for checking us out on Good News Jamaica TV for content that informs, inspires, and transforms. Please like, share, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more positive Jamaica content. Walk good.